this good? good? Okay. okay. Um, four fifty. Daniel, do we have the, the words to Hallelujah with a Savior? Okay, there we go. One, two, ready, go. Man of sorrows, what a name. The Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Bearing chain, <clears throat> scoffing root, in my place condemned he stood. Sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Guilty, violent, helpless, we, spotless lamb of God was he. Full atonement. Can it be hallelujah? What a savior! Lifted up was he to die, it is finished, was his cry. Now in heaven, exalted high. Hallelujah, what a Savior. When he comes, our glorious King, all Good morning, church. My name is Mike Davis. It is my honor to bring to you this morning the communion message. You know, you've heard me come before you and share about my job many times. I talk about it because I enjoy what I do as a veteran services officer. It gives me the opportunity to serve veterans and their families uh, when they are in need of assistance from the Veterans Administration. I'm motivated most times by Jesus' example of serving. But unlike Jesus, I sometimes allow my flesh to enter the picture. And when that happens, I might find some people are harder to serve than others, if you know what I mean. On occasion, my mind it's not always fired up to help certain individuals. But it always catches up with my heart along the way, and everybody gets served. I often pray in the morning before I go to work that God will show me my sin when it arises so that I might repent, and when it is identified and I repent, God is glorified. I look for my selfishness and my pride specifically, those two things. Because in Jesus' interactions with the people, he did not display either selfishness or pride. Because Jesus was perfect. But I am imperfect. I expect one of those sins to materialize sometimes during the day, and I'm, I'm always right at some point. And when I see it, because God always shows it to me when it occurs, I make the effort to 
Try to repent each time despite the difficulty. This morning, I'm going to imagine Jesus as someone that struggles with the same sins that I do. And I want you to see him as imperfect with the same sin as you do. Where do you see him failing in his obedience to God? If you, if you picture that, if you can imagine something so out of the way of Jesus having the same sins as you do and struggling with it. In Matthew 26, verses 47 through 54, The Bible says, 47, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with him. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward and seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword away in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? Jesus had the opportunity to put an end to the crucifixion before it even started. But he chose not to do so. He had help at his fingertips. Snap your finger. And tune of 12 legions of angels but he chose not to take the easy way out. Because that was not the best interest for you and for me and everyone that lived on this earth after his death. I'm grateful he was not selfish like me and put an end to the crucifixion and choose not to die for people that might not care that he was sacrificing himself for them, such as us. In Matthew 27, verses 38 through 44, it says, Two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking his head, shaking their heads, saying, You are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, the robbers were crucified with him, also heaped insults on him. I'm grateful Jesus was not prideful like me and decided not to come down from the cross to prove a point. To show those naysayers that he could do all those things they challenged him with because his father is God. I can't say my pride would have caused me to come down from the cross because I would have come down just to show them that I am who I said I am. I hope that this exercise has helped you understand how special it was for Jesus to choose to die on the cross. I'm so grateful because of Jesus' sacrifice that my sins are forgiven and forgotten every day by God, despite my flaws and my failures. Despite our flaws and failures, we are given a clean slate when we wake up each morning. Like Andre says, we're given a time to make a mistake, to mess it up, or get it straight. And that's only because of the blood that was shed for each and every one of us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, 
We thank you for the example of your son, not showing any sin, but being perfect so that we can have an opportunity, Father, to have a relationship with you, that we can have salvation because of the sacrifice that you were willing to give of your son and your son was willing to take upon himself for each and every one of us, God. So, Father, as we take communion this morning, as we take the juice that represents his blood that was shed and the bread that represents his broken body, God, help us to remember as we go throughout our day, God, that our sinful nature is all, will always be there. And God, when you point it out to us through the Holy Spirit, you give us an opportunity to repent, to get it right, Father. God, we thank you so much for all that you do. We thank you for the love that you have displayed. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you to everybody stand. We're going to sing a fun song. I love the fun ones, right? Uh, and then afterwards, Steve is going to bring us our sermon. Hill, hill, line of Judah. How wonderful you are. Hill, hill, lion of Judah, how wonderful you are, lion of Judah, I love thee, because you died upon that tree. They led you off to Calvary, and you went there just for me. Hill, hill, line of Judah, how powerful you are.
Bible and I read. Then I did just what it said. I love Judah. How marvelous you are. <laughs> Judah, now I know to that cross you had to go for me you took every blow now it's for you that I go Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. Come on. <laughs> How glorious you are. The Lion of Judah's gonna take me home. With all these friends I could call my own. All right, I sing hell, hell, Lion of Judah. All right. <laughs> Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. All right. <laughs> hail, hail, Lion of Judah. Ah. Oh. Oh. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. All right. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. <laughs> How glorious you are. Oh, so powerful you are. How wonderful you are. How wonderful you are. You made me see it. Amen. Oh.